the story of ALK positive patients and effective ALK inhibitors has been a remarkable one, in part because this was a target that was only identified in 2007, and a few years later we had an effective treatment on the market that was leading patients to have dramatic improvements that could go on for months or years. But crizotinib, the first out of the gate, which was really a serendipitous ALK inhibitor that was really designed to inhibit MET, uh, has its limitations, and most patients do progress within, within many months or a year or so. The exciting new issue is that there are a group of second-generation ALK inhibitors that are quite a bit more potent and demonstrate activity that is quite remarkable, not just in treatment-naive patients, not just in those who haven't received crizotinib, but even in those who became resistant and have acquired resistance to crizotinib, and then will still demonstrate a response rate in the range of 60% or so, even after they have already benefited from crizotinib for months or years at a time. So seritinib was just approved by the FDA in April of 2014, and this is based on studies in about 140 patients that were overwhelmingly positive in showing a response rate in the range of 60% that was really about comparable whether you had received prior crizotinib or not. The most recent data that was actually presented at ASCO 2014 is in the dose expansion cohort of that same trial which was at the FDA approved dose of 750 milligrams daily. Now that's associated with some greater side effects than we'd previously seen and been used to managing with uh, crizotinib, which tends to be extremely well tolerated by most patients. In contrast, seritinib at 750 milligrams daily has more GI side effects, transaminase elevations and nausea, perhaps diarrhea, that tend to be easier to manage, certainly, and milder when you decrease the dose. And it appears that you can decrease the dose to 600 or even 450 milligrams daily and still see very good effects in many of these patients. Another really encouraging aspect, not only of seritinib, but also other ALK inhibitors, such as electinib, AP26113, and others coming through, is that they all seem to have activity in crizotinib-resistant patients, pretty comparable, actually. And they also have activity within the brain because the brain has been an Achilles heel for crizotinib. The drug doesn't penetrate into the CNS and very, very commonly will have patients progress first or only in the brain. In fact, a study has shown about 46% uh, pr progress in the brain as their first or only site of relapse. And uh, so having an agent that can cross the blood-brain barrier and that actually is associated with shrinkage of brain metastases, as we saw with seritinib at the ASCO uh, conference, is, is a wonderful development for patients who have really felt vulnerable from that perspective. It's a sanctuary site that can finally be treated. So with seritinib, with electinib, and with others uh, that we're, we're moving through, it looks like we're going to have several options available for these patients that is really highly likely to transform their survival into the range of years.